So this podcast is aimed at high achieving, but sometimes overworked professionals who are often juggling family life or other commitments with exciting stages in their careers. And they want both that career success and to really fulfill some of their more ambitious goals and dreams. But they want to balance that with more time each week to create the energized and inspired lives that they deserve. So with that in mind, I wanted us to think through our Q2 this week. Last week, we did a review process for quarter one. And if you haven't listened to that, I do recommend you go back and listen to that. Um, For those of you who are less into reflection and looking back, I promise you that it really does lay that foundation for being able to create effective plans going forward. So definitely have a listen to that if you haven't already. And then today, what we're aiming to do is really orient ourselves for this quarter. By this point in the year, life can feel pretty busy and that it is really hurtling by. And what with February being a slightly shorter month and by March things are in full force and certainly in the school calendar things are going pretty crazy as well it can feel like life is progressing at quite a rapid pace, which makes it that bit harder to then be able to zoom out and have that strategic big picture. So today what I want to offer is that orientation for how we can have more of that strategic big picture uh, and navigate this and do this in a way that really feels aligned with our bigger goals and vision. And so one of the things I did a similar episode last year and I had a listener come and share with me that he then took this to his workplace and shared a session around this Q2 planning topic. Uh, And that was really nice to hear. And so if any of you feel like you want to make this more effective, then definitely reaching out to others that are involved with your goals and your dreams. Uh, Could be a partner, it could be your team. Uh, You know, consider sharing this with them and then using it as the basis for a bit of a planning session. And I'd love to hear if you end up doing that. And so with that in mind, I've got, I think, about five steps that I'm going to take us through that enable us to first zoom out and do that 20,000 foot view. But then in the end, get into the nitty gritty at the end of it but knowing that we've got that right perspective and orientation behind it that feels fitting uh, of the season. So the first stage in this process is a little bit like our word of the year and it's really asking us what ourselves what is the vibe for this season and for those of you who are in the UK or other parts of the globe that are in spring right now, then this is a very particular season. Now, I appreciate there are going to be those of you who are not in the Western Hemisphere and therefore experiencing different climates. Please do drop me a note and let me know what kind of seasons, you, what kind of weather and things you're experiencing in the natural world. I would really love to hear about that. For those of us that are in spring, this is a real fresh time of year. It is the time when all the flowers come out in concert. We start with sprays of blossom. Then we've had magnolia, we're going to have more cherry blossom coming. We've got bluebells coming. It is a spectacular time of year. And there's a real freshness if you can go out on a still a relatively cold morning with those nice, light, longer days. Uh, there's that real sense of renewal and uh, energizing uh, in, in nature going on right now. And so I personally, this is definitely my favorite season of the year and it's one that I really want to lean into and enjoy. So that will mean making sure that I go and see the bluebells, both in those famous places where it is, where it's known for things like the bluebells, but also to me, the real joy is seeing this on my own doorstep. So going into local woods and seeing the bluebell carpets, for example. And so I have a few things like that, that I really want to make the time to do. And knowing that it means that when it might come up for us as a question, and when we're doing a bit of family thinking about how we want to spend things like Easter, we know that there are certain places that we would love to visit. And it feels really easy then to think about those plans. Uh, We want to also spend a bit more time in the garden and we do try and think of things to draw the kids out into the garden. So last year it was a netball hoop. This year we've managed 
to get a secondhand trampoline that's pretty big. Uh, so that is keeping the kids excited to be in the garden. And then they, they would like us to be out as well with them. And so we can then potter around and I have a few little gardening projects with my son as well. So that's the backdrop. And I, just a question for you guys, which is that whether you are thinking about this in a work context or you're thinking about this in a personal context, what's what does that backdrop look like for you? What memories would you love to create in this quarter? When you look back at this quarter, what are the sorts of images that you would love to conjure up? And get really specific about that because there is a romantic quality to this season. And when I say romantic, I mean a beautiful quality, a dreamy quality. And if we can capture what that might look like, whether it is a team activity uh, or a family activity, I think that can be a really nice thing to have framing this planning process. So once we've thought a little bit about that vibe, the next stage is going back to our quarterly themes. So I had for my quarter one theme, the theme of organization. And I wouldn't say that that is completely finished. I highlighted last week a couple of areas and the progress in those. They were finance and wardrobe. I think with organization, it can be a little bit like a ball of string. And so for me, the progression this month is this quarter is to think about now what are some of those systems that are going to enable that organization going forward? And when I think of organization, I think it is a necessary activity. Often we just need to clear clutter, put things into its buckets, whether those are physical or digital or mental. But we also might want to shift into more of a top-down approach where we identify the most high leverage areas. We prioritize the areas that are going to make the biggest difference to our life and work. And we then can think about some of the systems that we can put into place that make that organizing process more automatic. And I'm going to talk in a future episode about asset-based living, particularly from a financial perspective. But I would like us to think about creating systems as the organizational equivalent of creating assets. So when we create a system, we are effectively setting it up such that going forward, it will continue to serve us. I'll give you some really small and practical examples. On the domestic front, actually capturing what needs to happen in your household on a daily basis. This makes it a lot easier to then outsource specific tasks. No one individual is then holding all of that in their heads. In the workplace, likewise, I've had a lot of conversations with clients and there can be really differing perspectives as to how much people want to document, how indispensable they want to be. Uh, so I've had a conversation with a client recently whereby he was being prevented from going on a secondment inter internally because he was so essential to his boss and his boss was sort of clinging on to him because it was a bit of a black box, but he kind of knew that he did everything. And so as we continue the coaching conversation, we actually realized that his problem, which was that he was then being sort of blocked in, in moving internally, was in some way self-generated because he'd made himself almost too useful uh, and he'd made it hard to replicate what he did. So wherever you feel like perhaps too much is sitting on your shoulders and it would be hard for you to extricate yourself, I think it can be a really useful exercise to do what my business coach talked about a lot, which is create an SOP for everything, a standard operating procedure. And I'm somebody who loves to outsource, doesn't like doing repetitive tasks, but I realized that I still had a lot of blind spots on this front. And so this quarter, quarter one, I started a few systems, but for me, definitely the progression in Q2 is going to be towards creating more systems, both in personal and professional life. And I'm going to be looking at where there is the biggest impact from creating a system. So it could be uh, something as simple as my Calendly that wasn't working. It wasn't serving me properly. I've used various scheduling tools, but because I'm part of different organization systems as well, they were it was all getting really confused and messy. And just taking a little bit of time to understand how that could now work, given my current obligations and responsibilities and setting that up has made it become a much more automated process again as it should be uh, and yet it doesn't stop me 
from having my deep work time and having protected time in the diary. So some of these things can feel really simple once we get our heads around them and sit down and sometimes we just need somebody else. In this case, I needed my team member to really help me troubleshoot this. I'd been stuck on it for quite a while. Um, but I just encourage you to have a think about where those some of those bottlenecks might be and therefore where it may benefit you to create a system that starts with a standard operating procedure. So it just starts with you um, detailing exactly what is involved in that process and then starting to think about how that could look different and how that could happen in a way that perhaps wasn't in- entirely dependent on you or a specific team member uh, that, that you're working with that is holding all of this and therefore sometimes there is additional noise and back and forth and dialogue about matters which could easily be systemized and could easily be discussed once and once and for all. And what that can then do is free you up for better conversations and elevated conversations. So you're not having to worry about some of that day-to-day stuff. So really that question for you to walk away with here is, where would there be the highest impact for me personally or professionally on my time, on my energy, uh, for me to create a better system that can serve me and support me better? So I look forward to hearing what you come up, come up with on that front. You might have had a different theme for Q1 or you might not have had a theme, but if you did have one, Maybe consider how you would evolve that theme, how you might want to deepen it or whether you need to pivot into another realm uh, that is related to your goals. So we have got our vibe for the quarter. We've got a theme or a focus. The next bit is some prioritization and what might be a couple of needle moving priorities that take us closer to our annual goals. So this is where you would go back to your annual goals list and just cast your eye uh, down that and have a look at which of those areas you might want to prioritize this quarter. For me, this one is around fitness. So I do say that in January, I don't want to be too New Year's resolution-y. I don't want to go hard on any kind of exercise nutrition plan. It just doesn't seem the right season for me. We talked in February about how to do health and hibernation. That's definitely more of my way. And so what that means, though, is that spring really is that time. Spring is that time to start leaning in. Uh, I feel that there's more of an energy to sort of leap forth and bound in the woods and really have that more springy energy, be outdoors. And whilst we've had a lot of rain here, which has certainly dampened things, we have longer days and it is less chilly. And even though it's really wet, I've actually got myself believe it or not, some waterproof socks. So now nothing can stop me um, from going on some runs even where it is super waterlogged. So that's my priority that I have referred back to my annual goals for and just seen which might what what's in there that might benefit from having a bit of a focus this quarter. So we've got our vibe, we've got a theme, we've got something that we're prioritizing. And the next stage then is to start thinking about specific projects. And I always like to differentiate here between business as usual and our needle moving projects. Now, typically our business as usual, there's going to be some sort of an impact if we don't do that stuff. Other people are probably going to be reliant on us, whether that is personal or professionally. We'll probably get some sort of an equivalent of a tap on the shoulder if we don't do this stuff. Now, There can be seasons of life where our business as usual is busier or less busy. This quarter for me, I have a couple of things going on that will create busier weeks in the weeks before. So I know that in those periods, I'm not really going to be asking huge amounts of myself in terms of my needle moving projects, because what's going to be happening in my day to day is going to be more than enough. And as I've discussed in previous episodes, when you have done your work on your bigger vision and your um, your annual goals and things, hopefully some of your business as usual is, is kind of aligned with your vision as well. So, you know, there is definitely an interplay going on there. And so I guess the, the main point here is 
if you look at this quarter and you think that your business as usual, the stuff of your day, your day to day, your responsibilities, the nature of various projects that you're already engaged in, if that's already feeling very full, you don't want to necessarily be chucking in loads of extra needle moving projects. You want to really balance the two things out so that it's done in a sustainable way. But let's say we have room for at least a project on the go at any one time. This is where I take the Cal Newport slow productivity approach. And it works really well for those of us who detail all of our desired projects and then look at it and get a bit overwhelmed. And that's definitely a reaction that I have. I know it's something that happens to Cal Newport. He's talked about that for his weekly planning. And so what he talks about is once you've captured those desired projects somewhere, you then operate a pool system. And that what that pool system means is that at any given time, you only take out from that bucket of projects, one or two projects. And so you are only really being confronted with the labor of one or two additional projects at any given time. And he really encourages this because we know that any given piece of work will always generate in, in inverted commas, overheads, by which I mean any particular piece of work will have various meetings and other interactions and admin associated with it. He calls this overheads. And what happens when we are doing too many projects is that we have too many of those overheads and they stop us from doing the actual work. And so the project moves along a lot less slowly, a lot less quickly, and we get more easily burnt out and we don't do as good quality work. So wherever we have a choice, it's always better to operate sequentially rather than having everything on the go at once. Now, knowing that I've had phases of my life where it's almost been impossible because I've been doing other major projects, whether it's the masters, whether it's the renovation, whatever else I've had going on alongside, there are just going to be certain phases where we have more things on our plate. And that's completely fine. I think what's really useful in this way of thinking about projects is even if we do have a lot that we want to do, Knowing that we're tackling it in that sequential way means that our brains can be really soothed by the idea that we're not having to do everything at once, we're not having to boil the ocean. It's a lot less overwhelming. We've captured everything that we want to do, and then we're just focused on one or two additional projects. So that's how I'm going to approach that. And I did have a little summary of the various projects that I had, which I'm just going to uh, summarize. Yeah, so I have got on top of business as usual, a couple of work projects. One of them is really on me and the other one is a bit more of a team one. I've got a financial thing, which is to get tax returned on early. And then I've got one or two other smaller projects. And then on the home front, I've got about four. One is uh, some works. Another one is um, a domestic thing. And then there are a couple of other ones that I think are to do with um, interior stuff. So quite a few bits and pieces. And at any given time, I'm going to be just pulling out one of those projects and having that at the forefront. And when I'm doing my weekly planning, I would just then be referring back to that particular project at, at any given time. So that's how I'm planning to do that piece. So just to recap once more, we have got our mood of the season or our vibe for the season. We've got a focus, which is for me going to be around systems. We've then got our priorities that are taken from our goals, anything in particular that needs a little bit of an additional focus or energy. And that for me is uh, the fitness. And then we get into specific projects and we attempt to have just one or two of those really on the go at any given time. The final stage then becomes that admin logistics piece. And this is where it really is probably worth sitting down with your team members or your partner or whoever it is that makes your life and work work and having that kind of planning conversation where you're doing a lot of the troubleshooting, you are thinking through the weeks and months and you're thinking through what might be needed, what might be on the horizon, what events might be going on, what might need a little bit of thinking and planning. And as you do that stuff, it could be so easy that we just sit down and we start there 
right? We just get into, okay, we need to do some QG planning. So we sit down with our diaries and we just start doing all that stuff. But the beauty here now is that you've thought through all of that bigger picture stuff first. So you've got a really nice backdrop now that you know that when you're now doing this planning piece, you kind of know where you're headed. You know where, how you want to feel. You want to know, you know what's at any given time, what the priorities are. So you can approach this with so much more clarity. And that also means that you don't need to overburden yourself or take on too much, right? Because you know of what, what it is that you want to experience and achieve uh, in that bigger vision, you can also, if the calendar's starting to look really full, you can say, hold on, I don't think that's really going to work because I have these extra things that I maybe want to be spending time on. Or if we do those two things, then when are we going to go and see the bluebells, for example. Um, so you've got a much more complete way of doing that admin and logistics and doing that diary work now. So I hope that's been helpful. Do let me know and especially let me know if you end up sharing this with somebody that is key to your vision and goals. Um, I would love to hear about it. And I look forward to connecting with you next time. Here's to a spacious, abundant and aligned Q2. Bye-bye.